Um, Goyan is a professor in the School of Public Health at the Peking University um, Health Sciences Center, where she also serves as the Deputy Director of the Institute of Global Health. She's also um, a Deputy Director for two prestigious organizations in um, China, the China Academy of Health Policy and Chinese Health Education. Dr. Guo is an active um, advocate of health policy, primary health care, and rural health in China. Over the years, she's led a number of large-scale research projects of both national and international significance. These projects range from public health, including health education, health services research, maternal and child health care, and health system policy reforms, as well as, as health inequities. Dr. Guo was a commissioner of the WHO Commission on Social Determinants of Health. Um, she received her MD from Beijing Medical University and an MPH from Tulane University. Please welcome Dr. Guo. Ah, okay. Thank you, Professor Wong, for your kindly introduction. To be honestly, my presentation will focus on the academic because uh, global health is brand new in China. I just introduced, uh, give the uh, very general picture, how is global health in China, the development and the capacity building. So that's, a, you know, that's the definition of global health everybody, everybody familiar with. And uh, in last years, we found that that's very hot topics on global health. My five years ago, my student searched the number of the articles um, for the international, for both international health and uh, global health. We found very interesting that uh, before 2000, uh, 2000, there are a lot of uh, articles published uh, in the international house. But after 2000, there is a huge papers on global health. And uh, they in, in my, it's a, just a search my line. And uh, what about global health in China? I think um, um, to look at global health in China, I think there are four key events or elements in events in international cooperation. First one is after, after 1949, in our first key event is we sent the first medical team to Africa in 1967 until now, nearby there were uh, 25,000 medical team member to 66 countries. Almost every year, uh, around 200 medical team working in uh, 47. Last year, there's about 180 medical team member working in uh, 47. Uh, uh, developing countries, most of them working in Africa, but a few of them working in East Asia and uh, Latin America as well. And the uh, second event is uh, 1978, when we opened the door to the world after the reform, and uh, there are more and more international collaboration and uh, in international exchange on global health. And uh, the third uh, event is uh, SARS break. Uh, everybody knows SARS was a big disaster, uh, but it's uh, uh, also an opportunity to public health and uh, for global health as well. During the SARS uh, break, in the beginning, the limited information which is open to the world. And, but the several years ago, the, uh, just to start from the SARS, Chinese government realized how important 
of public health and how important of global health collaboration. After seven, four years later, when the H1N1 epidemic in China and the Chinese government take more uh, open to the world, uh, their response much faster than the SARS. And uh, the fourth uh, key event, it was, uh, it's just actually the start, 2011. A lot of international uh, collaboration agency uh, take activity uh, in China on global health, like DFID, uh, OSAID, and the Global Fund. Especially for DFID, they launched the, oh, that's <laughs> all of this. Uh, just a jump this way. Uh, especially for the DFID Global House. Uh, in 2023, uh, just the last year, they launched uh, the new project named the Global House Support Project in China. The purpose of this project is for the capacity building. The, the building two capacity to China. Uh, one is building the capacity to provide the health aid to other developing countries and uh, building the, the capacity to be involved in global health governance, like working with the international health organizations. So the outcome, there are four outcomes for uh, this project. The first one is uh, first one outcome is Chinese is to generate the Chinese experience on health development, like uh, uh, maternal child health, like uh, neglect disease, tropical medicine, like uh, health systems. So there, in these out outcomes, there are three uh, component. One is health systems, and another one is maternal child health. A third one is uh, uh, tropic medicine. So three, uh, they open the bid. Uh, the three institutions own this, uh, this bidding. Uh, Professor Meng, Dean Meng, uh, own the bidding of uh, health systems. And uh, uh, Fudan University, Professor Qian Xu from Fudan University own the bidding of Maternal Child House and another institute of tr tropical medicine from China CDC on the beating of um, no, neglected disease. So the outcome one is to uh, summarize our uh, synthesis, the Chinese experience to say whether those Chinese good best practice is suitable for other uh, developing countries. And the second outcome, second outcome is uh, capacity building on global, uh, on health aid, uh, especially for the another international, uh, for the developing countries. Uh, there are three, three elements for this uh, outcome two. One is um, research, like research on uh, to summarize our evaluation, our evaluate the China medical team to Africa, like I said before, is also uh, almost uh, 50 years history, uh, and the fighting malaria. And the second one is to provide the training program for those um, medical team to Africa and uh, also to the government staff working in these systems. And the third outcome is capacity building on global health governance. Uh, one is to develop the global health strategy. As you know, a lot of developing countries has their own developing global health strategy, like US, UK, uh, Swiss, and uh, 
as some developing countries as also has their own uh, global health strategy like the Brazil and uh, South Africa as well. But so far, we don't have uh, global health uh, strategy in China, but we do need that one. So the, uh, so that's global health strategy is one of the component of the global health governance. And uh, another one is to provide, uh, another element is to provide the training to those um, uh, people who working in the field of global health. The outcome two is, uh, out, uh, outcome two is a pilot study. They want to try to use those better experience or best practice to use in uh, other developing countries to see the possibility and the acceptability and the accessibility and affordability as well. That uh, is a product, uh, it's a very good opportunity to China to do the capacity building. That's a, uh, it's a big research fund. It's, uh, it's a product that last year, there will be end of um, 2016 or 20. 17. The total budget is uh, 10 million pounds, UK pounds. That's uh, um, a research side. For the capacity building on global health in China, it's also started from the universities, like Dean uh, Chen Wen said, they have established Institute of Global Health. Sorry. It's a three kind of institutions. One is in uh, a Department of Global Health, um, and PKU has a Department of Global Health. And another one is an Institute of Global Health in Fudan, like Fudan. Another, uh, it's a center for global health, like Wuhan University and uh, Duke, Kunshan University as well. Based on those capacity building, in last end of year, we established Chinese Consortium of University of Global Health. Those, uh, this uh, Chinese University of Global Health in, consists of 10 universities, uh, 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 Peking uh, college, Medical College University and the Wuhan University. Third one is the Kunming University, uh, Xiangya University and the Zhejiang University. Uh, Fudan University, Peking University, uh, Sun Yisen University, and the Duke PKU, Hong Kong Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, that's the first step for the, uh, the first group of Chinese Consortium of University of Global Health. And uh, that's a general picture for Global Health in China. For the Global Health at PKU, we established the Institute of Global Health in 2007. At that time, it's a virtual uh, institute. We want to combine the different uh, disciplinary experts to join the Global Health. Uh, after the five years ago, uh, five years later, we established the Department of Global Health in Sukhuma Public Health. It's real Department of Global Health. In uh, the ob goal and objectives of our department, uh, also for, uh, we also have their full objectives, is to become a research center for major global health policy and uh, uh, governance uh, issues. And the second one is to become a knowledge dissemination and a training base on global health policy and uh, governance Third one is become core institution in China's global health network. Uh, the fourth one is became become to important member of global health academia and uh, potential WHO collab center for WHO collab collaborating center for global health. So well, in our department, there are ten. There are 10 um, faculty positions, but so far, there we only have uh, five faculties. So there are another five uh, faculties who are waiting for young, young talent to, inform, in, to be joined us. 
will come. Uh, okay, I will be brief. Uh, for the, in our department, we're completing the tax, for the education, we're completing the textbook of global health and global health, global health diplomacy. We compile uh, the textbook introduction to global health and uh, we translate the three global health uh, diplomacy uh, night, night, night book, textbooks. And uh, we're developing the postgraduate elective course of introduction to global health and the global health governance. And at the same time, we're holding short-term training uh, courses. Those courses, uh, with their three cause, regular courses for every year. Uh, we have a Duke PKU certificate program on global health starting 2009. There's another second one, it's a leadership building for next generation of global health. A third one is a Geneva Institute and PKU training course on global health di di diplomacy also starting, started from 2009. For Dick PKU's certificate program on global health, there are four courses. There are, uh, every year we recruit about 30 students and uh, taught together by uh, Duke, uh, Duke professors and uh, PKU professors. Combination of lecturing and group discussion followed by personal presentation and the English paper is required for the uh, final certificate. There are four Causes. One is introduction to global health. A second one is global health ethics. The third one is comparative health systems. Uh, the fourth one is global health intervention, health promotion as well. For the leadership building for next generation on global health, we supported the Ministry of Health in China and the China Medical Board. Aiming, it's aiming at uh, cultivating a talent pool for future development of global health in China. We take the young student, uh, young faculties to go to Geneva to attend the World Health Assembly, just to follow what Chen Mo taught us, to learn fighting by fighting, to learn swimming by swimming. So that's, this year will be five years to go to Geneva to attend the to, uh, World Health Assembly. Um, to observe what's the global health. And uh, that's, a, uh, that's a photo so we talk in Geneva. Okay, uh, for the, oh, let's move back. The, for the, for the research, for the research, we focus on the Global Health Strategy Evaluation China Medical Board in Africa, Evaluation Malaria Control in Africa, R&D and the Public Health Post-MDG related research and the health in equity, maternal, like health in equity and maternal child health care as well. At the same time, we uh, have done some consultation to the uh, MOH, WHO, UNICEF, USAID, uh, DFID, uh, Global Health uh, Strategy Institutions in UK working with. Uh, that's general picture for Global Health in both in China and in Peking University. Looking, thank you for attention. Looking for the questions and the suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I think, oh, yes, as, uh, you're right. We have a long history on China medical team in Africa. Uh, most of this uh, team working in the treatment. So, but before that, there is no any evaluation, just the working summary. There's no evaluation. It's what about those medical team? What kind of role they played? What, are, what about their contribution to the health systems, to the disease control? I think, I think that's what we need to do in the near future. Thank you.
infection between China's global health policy and Africa and its investment strategy. And are those, are those totally separate? Is the, are the industrial roles in Africa completely isolated from the health, or how do those relate? Uh, the answer is yes. This, uh, because, you know, I think the main reason is, you know, in China, it's vertical government systems. The, the business uh, com com walls, they take care of the uh, investment and the building in Africa. And, uh, you know, MOH take care of the medical team. They're extremely the silo. Different the silo. <laughs> Thank you. Lillian, could I also just introduce a little bit more about yourself? So, and each speaker who I call. So, oh, thanks. <laughs> Okay, your question is um, the School of Public Health Well, my question to you is because I have a particular interest yeah. in the health of people living in Beijing right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh I see. Yeah. I think the people live in Beijing, there's some uh, good things and the bad things. <laughs> I said, uh, a good thing is I think Beijing is a very friendly city and a very open city and uh, it's easy to communicate uh, with the people and, uh, and a very safety people, a safety city. And uh, bad things, bad air pollution. <laughs> and the food safety, is, it's, it's okay. Food safety and the water and sanitation, it's good. And uh, I think the Beijing, there are two bad things. First one is uh, air pollution, and the second one is bad traffic, <laughs> and the third one is very expensive housing. <laughs> Except that everything is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Both. Most of uh, you know, most of our, our research, uh, like uh, our uh, Dean Meng said, most of research focuses on the local, like Beijing, and the national, China, and the globally. Global health is just one department uh, of our university, but some of the university, sorry, some of the department, they also drive address some of issues of public health global wide. Thank you. Great, one more question, and actually, Jack. Uh, so. I'm Jack Newman, I'm the president of the Department of Health. Thank Welcome you, Jack. Uh, I was testing, we have a, a number of long-standing or developing uh, relationships with the World Health Program. You mentioned the new program, you mentioned some other partnerships as well. Can you tell us some of the Very 
good question, but it's <laughs> hard to answer. I think far we have a yes, we have long uh, collaboration on experience on global health uh, with Duke and uh, Washington University and uh, GW as well. Uh, for some for some challenges, I, to be honestly, I didn't think about it carefully. <laughs> I think for a good experience is uh, for both sides of the university, of both sides of faculties, uh, they are very interested in global health. They have common language on global health. They have, have a common understanding of global health. So it's easy, very easy to communicate and uh, to collaborate. And uh, some, I had some challenges uh, uh, when I working with uh, George Washington University. Uh, in the beginning, we had a plan to shift the program uh, among the uh, GW and PKU and the university from Ken Kenya and the university from uh, uh, India. We would like to build real uh, global health training program network, but tuition fee is a problem we are facing, charge you're facing. Because you all know United Health, United Universities has a tuition fee for the master student or PhD student sometimes. But Chinese students, we don't have a tuition fee. In the beginning, when we planned this uh, program, we saw, uh, no, our colleague from university and the India and the Kenya, they thought, oh, that's very easy. We just send the uh, student to your new university and other university, we don't charge the, or we accept your student to come to our university, we don't need to charge the, the student. And when we send our student to your university, you don't need to charge them at all. We said we didn't have tuition fee at all. Where's money from? So that's a big challenge for us. So, so far, that's a very good idea, but we didn't implement this product because, uh, you know, the money. <laughs> <laughs>